Last Big East thing, we'll circle back to it. Uh, people still asking about Patrick Ewing and Georgetown's coaching. Yeah, let's talk about that. Let's talk yeah. about Patrick Ewing. Uh, I, look, I, I'm telling you, this has been the talk of the Big East tournament. Like, yes. this is what everybody's been talking about right. today, more than, more than just the games itself. So right. um, I think we all agree that that Patrick it Ewing, it was time for him to go. It was time. Like, he needed to go. It was the it was the right time. Um, I, I think they did it with about as much uh, – leaving him as much dignity as you can in that situation. It's never easy to fire someone you don't want to fire. Yeah, they, they gave him the year. Let's be honest. He – because it's Patrick Ewing, he got the year, mm -hmm. you know, and and – they didn't take advantage of it because, again, coming into this year, Jeff Capel, Pittsburgh was that way. He freaking won coach of the year. Yep. There's a ton of coaches that we can say. I mean, Brad Brunel down at Clemson was another one that was you heard rumors about, and they were having a hell of a year. They're playing themselves in a tournament. There's a bunch of teams that have had the opportunity to do it. I mean, last year, the team didn't win a conference game. You do that in your fifth year, you're done. Mm -hmm. Any school. And because it's Patrick Jones, they gave him a year, and then the year went the way it went. I, I just – there's no no one surprised. Yeah. So let's talk about the list of coaching candidates. Um, we've all heard Michael Sh Michael Shrewsbury. We've all heard Rick Pitino. Yeah. Um, there's other names. The Jeff Capel's been kind of yep. yep. linked there. Uh, if you are uh, Lee Reed, if you are the Georgetown Athletic Director, mm. who are you hiring? You know, before you give me a specific name. Just you're you're from right from the DCA right right. What do you need to be to be able to be successful there right now? I'm not talking about I'm not talking about Big John. I'm not talking about JT three. Right, that was a different era. That was a long time right. ago. That's, right now, right. What do you need to be successful there? How do you have to coach? You you better change. Well, the style of play will be fine. It'll take care of itself. But you got to come in there expecting to change the culture. Like you got to get away from everything that was. And I don't mean it to say get away from John Thompson or anything else because everything he you're never gonna you're just like chasing a ghost. You gotta move on. You gotta move on. Like you gotta move on and, and put your imprint on the program. Trying to hang on to something that John Thompson has done, you're never gonna be able to do it. So just come in there, make your own program. I think the other thing is they got to start keeping some of the talent home. You yeah. know, they got to start keeping the talent home. That that talent has gone to Louisville. I mean uh it has gone to Louisville in the past, but it's been Villanova's. Mm -hmm. You know, you go and look at all this this Villanova run and watch how many players from the Washington D.C. area, who's Josh Rich, Hart, Slater, Slater, uh, all the guys even on the first championship, Jenkins, all mm -hmm. these guys, you know, they were all from from that team. And so I know I'm missing one more that was on an earlier roster. So they got to keep some of that talent at home that's gone everywhere else, even like that's gone to Duke and some of these other places. So that'll be the first. Jeremy Roach. Jeremy Roach. There's the, the, Trevor what, Keels. Is it the WCAC. WCAC. Yeah. That's the best high school basketball yeah. league in the United States of America, yeah. hands down. So you got to keep that talent home. Um, how do you do that? Is that just, is that recruiting? Are you hiring? Like, so I love what Kevin Willard did where he went out and he hired a bunch of guys uh, with deep, DC connections because he's not really right. a, a DC guy. So right. I had a bunch of guys that are. Right. And I would make the argument he's done a really good job with this Maryland program so far. So is that what you were are you doing? Are you hiring a DC guy? Are you hiring someone that already knows how to deal with like team takeover? You know what? I, I'm conflicted with that because I always feel as though you better hire sometimes it's good to come in and not necessarily have to have anybody. Mm -hmm. Right. Because now things have changed as much. You know, that, that was the kind of the thing one time or another. Now it's Sometimes you can tie yourself to a universe or to a program and then piss off other programs. It's like all trees, mm -hmm. right? We're talking about, you know, coaches and stuff taking over a job. All trees that they got what four, we got still got four EYBL teams. Mm -hmm. He has to monitor how he picks his staff and he has ties to take over, mm -hmm. right? So how he puts his staff together can dictate he, how he can rub somebody the wrong way, right? So I, I think in, I'm using Red as an example. I think he probably needs to surround himself. Real quick, for people also. that don't know, Red Autry is the guy that was um, hired to replace Beheim. Beheim at Syracuse. At Syracuse. So for him being in New York, he may need to get somebody else out there that doesn't have ties mm -hmm. to everybody here. And that's so he doesn't alienate himself saying, oh, you're taking a, a PSA guy or you're taking a Renz guy or you're taking a City Rocks guy. You know what I mean? Or something. So so. That, that that I think matters in this case, I think, is something that you just got to consider either way. I mean, I, I'm kind of 
I understand. There's a, there's a lot of politics. Right, yes, and you got to be prepared for that. I think that doesn't always win because the problem of it is when you take a guy from a program, it's not like you're going to get every kid from the program anyway. Right. It never works that way. Yep. Um, the, the one thing I would say is that in hiring somebody from the outside, like a Michael Shrewsbury, for mm-hmm. example, um, you don't have any of those like preconceived connections. Right. And part of the reason why, like Ed Cooley is a name that we love throwing around on right. the show, right? Hire Ed Cooley for Georgetown. Go do it. Um, it. His ability to kind of get along with everybody. Right. You're, I don't think, have you ever met anybody that doesn't like Ed Cooley? No. Other than, other than like UConn fans? <laughs> and even UConn fans that don't like Ed Cooley are just saying because they can't. Yes, because he, he, he wins. Right, while, right, right, right. Um, someone that can kind of come in and be friends with everybody and get along with And everybody. that's what I mean. And cross those, yes. uh, for lack of a better term, political line. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And he could come in and bring his entire staff and yes. be successful. And that's what I'm saying. So it's it's different ways you can go about it. But a guy like that, that can just say, hey, give me a chance, well-respected, mm-hmm. well like can flat out coach. A guy like that can change everything. And I think that's, you know, that, that would be a great hire. So who would you, give me your, the first person that you'd call give me the next person you call and who you would hope that you, you think you're going to end up getting if you're that AD. Wow. If you can get Shrewsbury, I mean, Shrewsbury, I mean, hell, what he's doing right now, taking Pitt to the tournament. I think that's Penn State. I mean, sorry, Penn State. I, I think Cape was another one. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's going to be ACC coach of the year. If, if um, you can pull that one off, I would you, so the, let me, let me push back a little bit on Cape because, um, he basically had one good season at Pitt mm-hmm. and another good season that was blown up because of chemistry issues. So is that enough to get a job like Georgetown? It's obviously going to be a rebuilding job. And I think the argument that you can make is that he rebuilt Pitt twice. Right. And I was going to say that. Yeah. I thought he had the talent there. Things went, you know, and and let's be honest, it wasn't his fault the first time when we went, went over to play. It was, you know what I mean? So that's it's just typical stuff that happened with young kids. Yep. So he he's shown he can get the talent in there. We know he can coach. It. And so that's why I say that, uh, you know, but. People forget that he he brought Blake Griffin to the Elite Eight. Right, right. I mean, he can flat. I mean, Jeff can flat. He can get it done. So um, that's why I say that. I just believe that he can do that I, I, I've, I've really what he has done is not easy because there's not a lot of coach that can come in there where you're like the only reason he's at Pittsburgh because of his buyout was too hot mm-hmm. and then he came out and flat out they had a hell of a year you know there's no doubt about that so I, I th- that's what you need and let's be honest this Georgetown job is a complete rebuild yeah, that's yeah, what you're you starting got from the ground up you are man the one the so one good thing about getting the job from the ground up is that it's easy to do that. It, well, easier to do that in the transfer portal, uh, transfer portal mm-hmm. era. That's a hard thing for me to say. Transfer portal <laughs> era. That's a tough one. Um, and you're not going to have to like you're you're building your own team, right? So you will be able to have like a two, three, four year window where you get it. Like a, you don't have to be great year one. No, it's not like walking into Duke when you're John Shire. It's not like walking into North Carolina no. when they you're all have expectations. expectations. So. Um, I think I I love the Shrewsbury fit there. Um, I'm kind of coming around on Jeff Capel. I don't think that that I don't know if that's the first guy that I would try to get, but I I like the uh the idea of him. You kind of sold me on that in a little bit. I, I'll add this too, something to think about. You'll 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 know this. I don't know if fans will understand this. That's probably one of the few jobs, if only job in the country, is because of John, because it's in Washington D.C. Mm-hmm. People always felt as though it should be th- that a black head coach represents that institution. Fair or not, whether you agree with it or not, but you and I both know we've been around coaching enough for that job. It's always seemed like because of that's the ghost that John that John Thompson. Mm-hmm. There's there's a lot of people that grew up thinking that Georgetown was an HBCU. Yeah, yeah, a lot I of mean, people. Yeah, did. you know, and so it, that's that's why. I mean, one of the reasons those guys are helping. I don't, coach. I, don't, I don't think that it's necessarily a bad thing either. No, it's it's. I'll tell you what. Growing up there, and I've said this growing up there, growing up in Washington D.C. is one of the places where it's called Chocolate City. It's one of the few mm-hmm. places where African Americans are the majority. That's changing, but in the city. You know, you know, years ago it was 70, 30 or 80, 20. It's higher than that. No, yeah. it, it was higher than that. And nowhere else in the country can you say that for a city. Mm-hmm. And that's why I said that place is unique in that manner. And it's it's it, and the people there 
that's how they carry that. They hold on. They hold on to that, and that's why I say Georgetown used to be a big part of that. So again, and they may go completely away from it. Like I said, I said that before. Somebody has to come in there with their own energy, their own. Yeah, feel. I I just the one thing I hope is that the whoever they hire, they let them. They have to. It. They let them go and build a program their own I, way. I think they have to because the guys that we're talking about don't have to go. Yep. So they don't have to take it. So if you're not going to allow me to, if I'm a coach, one of these guys that they're going after, you're not going to allow me to be me, then I'm good. I got a job. They're not hiring an assistant. There, no assistant coach that feels like, man, I got to take this job. It's it's They're not offering that to them. The guys that they're offering have jobs. We're talking about a guy, one guy mentioned just took his, taking his team to the NCAA tournament mm-hmm. in year two and another guy that just won coach of the year. Yeah. So we, we, those are the two guys we're naming. And not yeah, saying they're, that they're, they're getting gonna, it. If they're either going to get Georgetown or right, they're going right, to turn that into right, a station. Right, So yeah. they, they're going, you know, we're just naming that this is the caliber of the coaches that we're talking about, and they don't have to take it. Yep. All right. Let's- hey, guys, just a reminder, our sponsor for today's episode is Run Your Pool. They are hosting the Field of 68 Bracket Challenge. This year, they are giving away $1,500 in free prizes. It's all an incentive for you to get on there and find out just how good their platform is. I've been using them for my bracket pools for years. I've used them for Super Bowl squares. I use them for everything that I need to use them for. The biggest survivor pool that I'm in for both NFL and NCAA tournament is by Run Your Pool. So go check them out. The link's below. Tap in.